One in three African Americans who needs mental health care actually receives it. And it's not so much about access to health care, it's more about the stigma associated with getting help. People don't want to be seen as crazy or weak. So the First Ladies for Health is launching a mental health campaign to try to change those views, to break the silence, to start the healing. The healing for Rochelle Prater took eight years. A car accident, a traumatic brain injury that led to chronic depression, and a tipping point when she knew she needed to get help. The pain was so bad, I got in my car, I drove, and I didn't tell anybody. Inadvertently, because of the pain being so deep, I didn't understand that I would actually left my child at preschool and did not pick him up. Rochelle found treatment through therapy, something she wishes more African-American women would do. We cannot effectively serve others without making sure that we are whole and complete as well. For years, former military man Brian McConnell suffered in silence until his depression got in the way. Withdrawal, isolation, issues, just functioning, right? To the point where taking a shower and getting dressed became next to impossible. Like I come from a world where you prayed everything away, so uh, prayer wasn't working. Definitely wasn't working by itself. Um, and so, yeah, that's the, I was scared to express my emotions. I was scared to look weak. Brian learned it actually takes more strength to say these words. Emotionally, I don't know what to do, and things are falling apart. I need help, I need to talk through it. I need um, to interact with people who've been through it. I need to um, know that, it, that this is okay. With therapy, Brian says he's better, stronger, and more aware of what healthy feels like. For Jaden Thompson, a fatal car accident triggered depression in her senior year. The car she was driving was hit head on in front of her high school. Tragically, the other driver passed away. I was bullied a lot. Um, people were saying I was going to jail for manslaughter. Um, I was not in a good headspace. And then a lot of my friends left me and then my boyfriend broke up with me. And it was just all really crazy at a, sh at a short amount of time that was happening. And I think that's when things turned for me. I kind of just got sad. Jaden was later diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I think being diagnosed helped me a lot because um, it helped me kind of realize what was happening at the time. And I can look back and think, wow, I am so much better than I was three years ago. Doctors want you to know we all have mental health. Think of it as on a spectrum. Life experiences, death or loss, illness or conflict can trigger depression or cause anxiety. If these conditions go unchecked and get worse, it can lead to mental illness, the other end of the spectrum. At UC Health in Avondale, Dr. Robert Pulliam and his staff make mental health check-ins a part of the routine. It's just as standard as, you know, getting your blood drawn to check your cholesterol. Us incorporating it into a regular exam is just a screening, just like everything else. I think it makes it easier for people to talk about it. Talking about it is an important first step. With mental illness, the longer you wait, the worse it can get. Because you, you figure that's just the way life is. And part of the problem is that's also part of the illness. It's like it reinforces itself. And so really taking that first step to talk to someone when you start having those feelings that don't feel normal to you, because it's better to attack those things early than later, because it's harder to fight later. Fighting the stigma of mental illness is often the biggest barrier in a culture where you're taught you don't tell your business. We have to tell our business. We have to say, I'm hurting, I'm in pain, I can't do this alone. If someone says, how are you doing? It's okay to say, I'm not doing well today. Dr. Chantel Thomas of Sound Mind Counseling says experiences with racism, discrimination, and inequity leave many African Americans with significant emotional distress that often goes untreated. It's time for us to accept that Everybody goes through something, and we all need help. We all need to speak to someone about the pain that we're experiencing, especially right now. 
We have so many things happening in the world and it also trickles down to our homes. It trickles down to our parents, our grandparents, our children, and they are carrying this pain and this hurt as well. According to Dr. Angela Scott of Cincinnati Children's, an increasing number of kids, about one in six, are dealing with mental illness. The key is early intervention. It's important to have, you know, those early intervention as quickly as we can get it in place for kids. Um, the school is a really great place to start. Um, so, you know, obviously there has to be a big push. And, and what I'm pushing for in the mental health field is so that we can have more of that integrated within the school setting so that kids are getting the education that they need to identify for themselves what those signs and symptoms of, you know, mental illness are and that parents have that information as well and that teachers are able to identify that early on as well. If you or someone you know needs help, Reach out, break the silence to start the healing. Rochelle, Brian, and Jaden remind us that the strong survive because they speak up and refuse to give up.